Hi everybody, I know we're busy at this time of the year, so I thought I'd put together a quick little YouTube clip for the environmental officers out there and about how this year we can all do something to reduce our carbon footprint in buildings by looking at the air conditioning side. So before I start my talk, there's two things I want you to remember. First is the letter F. So the best way for me to get you to remember that is to think of F this, F that, F gases. So can you remember that? F this, F that, F gases. Second is the number 70. This is the amount of energy reduction we can get from some of the new technologies. So let's see if you remember that by the end of this video. I'm George Haydock and let's get going. All right, so the future of air conditioning is, is that I thought I'd start with a question. And the question is, what is the critical temperature of the F-Gas Refrigerant 410A, the common refrigerant that we all use or most companies use today in air conditioners. It's 70.71 degrees. So why is this important? Let's have a look. What's the problem? So if you have a 40 degree day and you're removing 20 degrees from inside the building or inside the house or office, that means that that outdoor unit is working with temperatures around about 60 to 65 degrees as you can see from the slide. So 60 degrees is close to the 70.17 degrees. So what's happened, you've got really high pressures in that unit, you're drawing in lots and lots of power, and the machine's having a really hard time, not very efficient. So what happens if we get three or four days in a row? Well, to start with, we get premiers coming on the television and on the front page of our paper saying, please turn off appliances is that what appliances are they asking us to turn off in these heat wave conditions? Well, it's not your TV, and it's not your new computer. It's that old F-gas refriger refrigerant unit that's drawing about 60% of the power into your building. Wow. No wonder it's looked on as a problem child by electricity authorities. So what's the answer? Air conditioning units that are running on natural refrigerants. That's the answer. Why? Because if we have a look, why is this the answer? So if we have a look, uh, air conditioning unit running on a natural refrigerant or an inverter machine running on a natural refrigerant, like hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons are 30%, have a 30% higher critical temperature. So you don't have those problems on hot days. Secondly, hydrocarbons can absorb up to twice as much heat energy that, per kilogram as refrigerants, old chemical refrigerants like 410A. Thirdly, because hydrocarbons are natural refrigerants, they're better for the environment than chemical F-gas refrigerants. And of course, hydrocarbon refrigerants are cheaper. So let's have a look at some results of a test that Pioneer did with three 15 kilowatt machines. The first one was a fixed speed R22 machine. The second one was a brand new inverter running on F gases 410A. So the and the third one was the same brand new inverter machine running on hydrocarbon refrigerants. So the first old fixed speed drew 17.3 amps, the 410A inverter machine drew 7.9 amps, and the inverter machine running on the new natural refrigerant PI60 drew only 4.9. That's a massive 70% energy reduction. I don't know what else you can do in your building to get such a reduction. It's huge. So what's happening now out there? The world is focusing on removing F-gas refrigerants. Why? Well, the simple reason why, it's the most cost-efficient, tangible, global measure, measure to address climate change. Let me say that again. So what they realize now is that it's the most cost-efficient, tangible, global measure to reduce climate change by moving away from F-gases. So, if you, if you care about the future and climate change, why not do what I did and join fgases.org? I'm George Haydock. Thank you for your time.